Whenever it comes to communicating with a database with Adonis.js, we're going to want to install Adonis.js Lucid. Now, Lucid supports SQL databases, so that's going to be Postgres, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, Maria, and SQLite. It also comes with two different database approaches. So it comes with the database module as well as the Lucid ORM. So the database module is going to be closer to the actual database definition and structure. So whenever you query things from your database, you'll be defining the actual table name and the tables columns as they're defined within the database itself. Whereas with the Lucid ORM, we're able to remap those however we wish so that we can normalize them within our application and not be dependent upon any column structure that we have defined within our database. Both the database module and the ORM come with a query builder that's built on top of ConnectJS. They have transaction support, pagination support, and tons of other things. But the main difference between them is, like I said, the database is going to be as as defined in the database and the ORM is going to be mutatable so that you can define it as you wish. And in addition to the examples we just mentioned earlier, you can also attach hooks so that whenever you're performing CRUD or create, read, update, and delete operations, you can hook into those different operations and perform a specific action anytime that they are executed. So for example, if we needed to hash our password anytime that we're creating a new user, we can easily use a hook to perform that action prior to actually saving the user record into the database. And this is all defined using what's called a model which is what you're looking at right here. A model is essentially a descriptor for the database. So this is how we define the customizations that we need. So we can specify a specific column within our database using the column decorator. We can specify our primary keys using the is primary object property. And Lucid uses Luxon under the hood to allow us to take a date time or date value from the database and convert it into a Luxon date time object dynamically anytime that we query a record using our model. As I mentioned earlier, you can also mutate how the column name is defined from what's defined in the database. The default behavior for this is to take snake case database columns and convert them into camel case. So this is the default normalization behavior that happens with Lucid. We'll dig deeper into this in following lessons. But for now, just note that you can customize the column name as it's defined within your model by specifying a column name property within the column decorator. And now we can change it however we wish from what's defined within the database. So for example, here on the model, the column name will be ID, whereas within the database, it would be user ID. So we can rename columns dynamically as we wish using the model as well. In addition to this, we can also define and query and execute commands against relationships. So one table's relationship to another table, we can go from one model and reach into a related model and query or pre-populate data for that particular model through our base model. So for example, we could take this user record here, query it, and then pre-populate that user's profile using this particular relationship definition. So I wanted to run through the benefits of the ORM out of the box. It might seem like a lot of overhead to mention right now. We're gonna spend some time in the following lessons digging into each one of these benefits, but for now, I just wanted to run through them so that you know the benefits of using the Lucid ORM over the database module. So that whenever you're querying data from your database, it's a lot more beneficial to actually go through your model as opposed to directly using the database module. Now there's gonna be instances where you'll need to use the database module and that's perfectly fine, but using the ORM definitely comes with a lot more perks. Now, whenever it comes to the database module, there are additional things that it does outside of just querying and performing CRUD operations. So the database module itself also brings in migrations. Migrations are how we actually build up and down our database. The migrations consisted of two different methods, an up method and a down method. The up method will be in charge of creating our database and then a down method can roll back any changes that we created using our up method. So for example, here they're creating a table called users that will have the columns ID created at and updated at. Using migrations, we can not only create tables, but we can alter them as well, adding additional columns, deleting columns, changing primary and foreign keys, data types, nullables, all that fun stuff we can do through migrations. And over time, as you add additional migrations, these will serve as kind of a change log for your database itself and allow you to go back and see the different changes and time periods at which you created those changes. And it's also a great way to keep your production database up to date and in sync with the actual code that your production application is running against. And we'll dig into this deeper in following lessons specifically on migrations as well. One other thing that the database module brings to the table are seeders. Seeders are how we can pre-populate our databases with specific information that we either have hard-coded that we're getting from some external REST API or something of the like. So as you can see, it's just a simple class that has a run method 
and then we just create whatever database information we need to within that run method. And then we just execute it using an ace command that we'll take a look at here at the end of this lesson. So now that we know some of the capabilities that Lucid is bringing to the table here, along with the database module and the actual Lucid ORM, let's go ahead and install it within our application here. So go ahead and open up your terminal of choice and then CD into your project repository. And let's do npm i at adonisjs slash Lucid. Once that's installed, let's go ahead and configure it within our application. So this will be node ace configure at adonisjs lucid okay so once we execute that it's going to ask us what database driver we'd like to use um, i'm going to be using postgresql feel free to select whatever database driver you will be using once we hit enter on that it's going to go ahead and pre-populate whatever it needs to within our application so it's going to create a database configuration file for us it's going to update our environment variables with some environment variables to connect to our database itself and it will update the example with that as well then it's going to install luxon like i briefly mentioned before with luxon we can take the date time values that we have within our database and convert them into Luxon date time objects so that we can easily convert them to whatever format, mutate the date time value or anything else that we might need easily using our models. And then it's also going to install the selected database package for the driver that we selected. It's going to stub us with a default factory file within a brand new database directory. And then it's going to add the new ace commands and the loose provider within our Adonis RC.JSON file. So lastly, it'll ask us where we would want to display our instructions. I'm just going to hit terminal here and it's going to plop out some environment variable TypeScript definitions for us to add into to our env.ts file. So go ahead and select whatever environment variables for the driver you selected. I selected Postgres, so I'm gonna select the Postgres based variables here, copy them. Let's go ahead and open up our code base, dive into our env.ts file, and let's paste these in here. I'm gonna put a line break so that we can easily tell where this group came from. Okay, and then let's head back into our terminal here and there's one more to grab. It's this right up here at the top, db connection. Go ahead and copy that one as well and plop that in here. There we go. So as we went over in a previous lesson, this env.ts file is going to provide type safeness to our environment variables. If we are missing any that are defined in here as required, whenever we go to boot our application, it will fail to boot and it will warn us why. And that'll help us prevent errors within our production environment. Additionally, if we go to read specific values from our environment variables, these definitions here will be used to auto-populate uh, the autocomplete for grabbing those particular variables as well as the type. Okay, so next let's go ahead and create a database for us to use throughout this series. So I'm gonna open up table plus, click on the little database icon up there, and I'm just gonna hit new. I'm gonna call this LLA5 for Let's Learn Adonis 5. Go ahead and open that up. And we should see a nice empty database here. Once we have that created, let's jump into our environment variables. So you can see the ones that our configure command for Lucid plopped into our environment here. For the most part, we can leave these as is. Uh, you will want to update your user if you need to. For example, mine's Postgres. My password is the very secure password. And then let's be sure to enter in the database name that we just created, so LLA5. So now Lucid should be completely installed and configured within our application. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the new ace commands that this came with. So let's jump back into our terminal here. I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. And let's run node ace to list out the commands. So you can see that we have a new section here called db, which has db seed, which will execute any seeders that we might have created. We have db wipe, which will drop all the tables, views, types within our database. So it's essentially just going to allow us to start from scratch. We have a couple new make commands as well. So we have make model, which will create a new Lucid ORM model. We have make seeder, which will create a new seeder file. And we also have make factory, which will allow us to create a new factory file. And then we have a whole nother new section down here called migration. So we have migration fresh, which will drop all tables and remigrate the database. And then we have migration refresh, which is slightly different. Instead of just dropping all of the tables, it will roll back our migrations and then rerun those migrations. So fresh will just jump straight back and delete everything and then rerun, whereas rollback will increment back through our migrations, undoing them and then redo them. We have reset, which will do just the rollback portion of refresh. So it will not rerun them. It will just roll them back. And then we have rollback, which can be used to roll back to a specific batch number. If you're not familiar with what a batch number is, we'll be learning about this in a later lesson. Now we have migration run to run any migrations that have not yet run, which are in the pending state. Now we have the migration status, which can be used to view the actual status of any migrations that we have. So those are the new ACE commands that we have. We will be using those throughout the next several lessons that we have coming out here on this series. In the next lesson, we'll dive deeper into migrations, what they are, and how we can use them to create tables within our database. Yeah.